So um, welcome everyone. I'm the new executive director for the Alberta Wilderness Association. My name is Deborah Donnelly. Um, I've been here about three months. I moved down from the Yukon where I was working for the Yukon Conservation Society. Um, I just wanna welcome everyone to our talk this evening. Uh, I would like to start out with a land acknowledgement. So in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Tsutina and the Yaha Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation, uh, Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I would like to welcome our speaker for this evening. Devin Earle is a conservation specialist at AWA. She's been there longer than me. <laughs> So um, she has degrees in environmental science and ecology from the University of Calgary with a focus on tree growth in Alberta. And uh, she's also responsible um, for, for handling our files on forests, as well as um, conservation files for the Eastern Slopes and uh, coal amongst others. So she, this is a really close, um, area for her and I know that she's very passionate about forests and hopefully all of you are as well and we would like, uh, uh, I would like to welcome her to uh, start her presentation. Thanks for the introduction Deb um, and thanks everybody for joining me today. Um, as Deborah mentioned um, today I'm going to be talking about um, forests and more specifically forest certifications and particularly uh, one forest certification system that in my view really fails to ensure sustainable forestry and uh, leads to greenwashing of the forestry industry in Alberta. And um, if you haven't heard the term greenwashing before, um, by greenwashing I mean conveying a false or conveying false or misleading information about how a company's products are environmentally sound, which misleads consumers. Um, so most of you are probably familiar with Alberta Wilderness Association already, um, but for those of you who are attending your first talk today, um, Alberta Wilderness Association is an environmental nonprofit organization, and we seek the completion of a protected areas network and good stewardship of Alberta's lands, waters, and wildlife. And Deb already uh, gave me a bit of an introduction. Um, so. Um, just, uh, just to repeat about me, I have a background in environmental science and ecology. And uh, in my role as a conservation specialist with AWA, I focus mainly on forests, uh, on the Eastern slopes, uh, coal, and on some wildlife and hunting issues. And I've been with AWA since May of 2021. So during this talk tonight, um, I'm going to start with explaining a little bit about what forest certification is. Um, then we're going to look at uh, some different forest certification systems in Alberta and the extent of certified forests in the province. And following that, we're going to look uh, specifically at the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, or SFI, and how its standards, um, in my view, fall short when we're looking at important areas like indigenous rights, biodiversity, and protection of old growth forests. And then we're gonna look at some uh, examples of unsustainable forestry that is certified sustainable under SFI. And finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, a competition bureau complaint that AWA will be signing on to um, that's going to be submitted by EcoJustice early next week. So starting with some background information on forest certifications, um, in 1992, there was a meeting of nations called the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. Uh, and this was held in Rio and it's commonly known as the Earth Summit. And at that conference, one of the major themes that was discussed was concerns about decreasing quantity and quality of forests worldwide. And after the Earth Summit in Rio failed to produce an agreement to stop deforestation, forest certification was created as a market mechanism to give consumers the option to choose products that were produced with environmental sustainability in mind. And this is how the Forest Stewardship Council or FSC was created. Um, so it was founded in 1993 following the Earth Summit 
by a group of conscientious consumers, traders, and environmental and human rights organizations. And FSC is an international nonprofit with standards that are locally adapted uh, in each country. And it certifies over 213 million hectares of forests in 89 countries. And FSC has uh, comparatively stringent standards that are based more firmly in ecosystem science compared to some of the other forest um, certification systems that we're going to see. And um, particularly today, we're going to be talking about uh, the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, or SFI. So by contrast, SFI was developed um, by industry as a certification system to compete with FSC. And SFI certifies forests in uh, North America, so 150 million hectares in total, 76% of that is in Canada. And there was a large uptick in adoption of uh, SFI in 2002 when the Forest Products Association of Canada made certification a requirement for membership. And I'm going to read out some claims that are made on SFI's website um, about sustainability. And uh, afterwards, we're going to talk a little bit about why I think these claims are unsubstantiated. So choosing certified sustainable forest products is a great way to protect species, combat climate change, reduce plastic pollution, and protect water supplies. We are working to shape markets today and ensure that sustainably managed forests will continue to play a crucial role in keeping the planet healthy. SFI certified forests are sustainably managed to provide habitats for multiple species, including species at risk. SFI standards take a multi-species approach and SFI certified companies are held to the highest level of species and habitat con conservation. Certification is the best way to ensure that a forest is sustainably managed. Vigorous and healthy forests that are sustainably managed are more resilient to the impacts of climate change. And finally, the SFI label means that the forest the wood comes from is managed sustainably to ensure many benefits like mitigating climate change. And so before we get into why these claims are unsubstantiated, um, I wanted to show this map of forest certification in Alberta. So this map comes from the Forest Products Association of Canada from 2021, and it shows SFI certified forests in yellow and FSC certified forests in red. Um, there's only one company in Alberta that is FSC certified, um, and that's uh, Alberta Pacific Forest Industries or ALPAC, which has uh, quite a large tenure, as you can see. And the rest of this in yellow is SFI certified forests. And there are 10 companies operating in Alberta that have SFI certifications. And both of these standards, the FSC and the SFI, are checked by third party audits. So this is a statement from uh, the Alberta Forest Products Association website. And it says, Alberta's environmental regulations around forest industry activity are some of the strongest in the world. Forestry companies are accountable for complying with those regulations. Many companies also pursue certification to sustainability standards set by independent nonprofit organizations. Achieving certification to those standards ensures all legal requirements are met, but can also include voluntary measures beyond what the law requires. So this statement is just an illustration of industry using forest certification to sort of justify um, how great and how sustainable forestry in Alberta is. And um, this is from the or from Alberta's Forest Economy 2021 Handbook, which is a Government of Alberta publication. And it says, Alberta's forest resources, sustainable forest management regime, and world-class manufacturing facilities position the province as a global leader in the production of innovative forest products that support the economic, social, and cultural fabric of over 90 rural and Indigenous communities. As a complement to Alberta's rigorous and comprehensive forest management standards and regulations is the fact that 83% of managed forest lands in the province have achieved third-party international sustainable forest management certification. This is a crowning achievement when only 11% of global forests share the same status. So the extent of forest certification in Alberta is one of the main justifications for statements by the Alberta government 
that forestry in our province is sustainable. So it's really important to look at these forest certification systems and make sure that they're actually achieving what they say they are. So one of the main issues with SFI is that it claims to certify sustainability, um, but they don't actually have any definition of sustainability within their standards. So ecological sustainability is a really wonderful goal to have, um, but without a definition for it, it becomes uh, sort of an environmental buzzword like eco-friendly that is used to draw people in, but doesn't have any real meaning or doesn't have any teeth behind it. And although there isn't a standard definition of sustainability, um, the 1993 Ministerial Conference for the Protection of Forests in Europe defined sustainable forest management as the stewardship and use of forests and forest lands in a way and at a rate that maintains their biological diversity, productivity, regeneration capacity, vitality, and their potential to fulfill now and in the future relevant ecological, economic, and social functions at local, national, and global levels, and that does not cause damage to other ecosystems. So when I hear claims about sustainable forest management, I'm expecting that this definition, which is close to 30 years old now, is what's being followed. Um, the even older definition of sustainable resource development is uh, something along the lines of harvesting a resource in such a way that the resource is not depleted over time but our understanding of ecosystems has evolved a lot since then. And we understand that forests are um, a lot more than just the timber that exists within them to be harvested. Other issues with SFI are that it does not certify outcomes. It only certifies processes that could lead to an outcome. And I'm going to explain a little bit more what I mean about that in the upcoming slides. Um, also, the SFI forest management standard has many shortcomings with regards to its objectives around indigenous rights, biodiversity, and old growth protection. And all in all, SFI is conveying misleading information to consumers about the sustainability of its products, which is what we call greenwashing. So getting into SFI's forest management standard and the protections that it has for old growth forests and primary forests, um, as most of you probably know, old growth forests are extremely ecologically important. They create habitat features that are important for wildlife and species at risk like endangered woodland caribou. And uh, they're critical for maintaining biodiversity and they store much more carbon than young managed forests do, which is important in the fight against climate change. A typical harvest rotation in Alberta is around 80 years, um, meaning that a managed forest uh, is harvested every 80 years, and this effectively removes old growth forests from the landscape and can have really dire environmental consequences. So it's really important um, to be putting protections in place for old growth forests. And looking at the 2022 SFI forest management standard, um, the standard does not mention intact forest landscapes or primary forests at all. So primary forests are forests that haven't been previously logged. So they're not necessarily old growth forests, but they could become old growth forests if they're left to their own devices. And intact forest landscapes are large intact tracts of forested landscape that exhibit no detectable human activity or habitat fragmentation. And these are concepts um, that aren't mentioned at all in the standard. Um, and that's a major oversight because they're really important in forest conservation. What the standard does have is a single indicator dealing with old growth, um, which states that certified organizations need to support and participate in programs for the conservation of old growth forest in the region of ownership or forest tenure. And there's no details about what these programs need to entail or what the outcome has to be. Um, so as you can see, this doesn't actually require that any old growth forests are actually protected. And similarly, uh, successional stages of forests are briefly mentioned in the standard, but there are no specific outcomes required. And instead, certified companies are required to have a program to support age classes. And this is a theme that's going to come up again and again in the next slides, is this concept of having a program to protect some ecosystem value. Uh, this language is very vague and discretionary, and it's seen throughout the SFI forest management standard. 
So I'm going to read out some of the indicators in SFI's force management standard regarding Indigenous rights. <clears throat> so it, the SFI 2022 force management standard states that certified organizations shall recognize and respect Indigenous people's rights. Certified organizations shall develop and implement a written policy acknowledging a commitment to recognize and respect the rights of Indigenous peoples. Certified organizations with forest management responsibilities on public lands shall confer with Indigenous peoples whose rights may be affected by the certified organization's forest management practices. And certified organizations are encouraged to communicate with and shall respond to Indigenous peoples whose rights may be affected. So it's very obvious here that these indicators are inadequate. The language is again, vague and not mandatory, especially statements like shall confer with indigenous people and are encouraged to communicate with indigenous people. So to compare it briefly with um, FSC, which requires free prior and informed consent with indigenous communities, SFI requires only communication with indigenous communities and the vague wording really falls short of ensuring that Indigenous rights and livelihoods are protected. And if you're interested in reading more about this, there are a couple good resources that go into more depth about um, Indigenous rights within FSC and SFI. Uh, one of them is a report by Greenpeace that compares the two standards, and another one is a blog post by the Natural Resources Defense Council. And um, if you're interested in reading more, feel free to email me after this and I can share these links with you. And with regards to threatened and endangered species, um, there aren't any goals within the SFI standard to restore habitats for imperiled species or restore populations of imperiled species. Rather, the standard attempts to address endangered species through what they call forests with exceptional conservation value. And unfortunately, these forests with exceptional conservation value are loosely defined and discretionary. So they don't do a good job of protecting endangered species. And there's also no mention of caribou within the SFI standard, uh, which is a threatened species, uh, both federally and provincially, and relies on intact older forests to survive. And protection of biodiversity should be at the top of everyone's mind these days with the ongoing biodiversity crisis. Um, and the SFI standards uh, with regards to biodiversity are again, vague and discretionary, including uh, indicators like certified organizations shall have a program to incorporate the conservation of biological diversity, including native species, wildlife habitats, and ecological community types at stand and landscape levels and certified organizations shall consider the role of structural retention when developing forest management plans. Um, so if you don't know what structural retention is, um, when a forest is harvested, there are some trees or groups of trees left behind uh, in the harvested area, which acts as a lifeboat for wildlife and biodiversity to be able to recolonize the area when the forest regenerates. And it's really important for biodiversity and there has to be enough structural retention for it to be effective. So that's a really important um, aspect of sustainable forest management. SFI also faces a lot of criticism for having misleading labels. Um, so a product might actually bear the SFI label without coming from an SFI certified forest because of the certified sourcing and fiber sourcing labels. Uh, these standards, the certified sourcing and fiber sourcing standards are even weaker than the forest management standard that I've been talking about so far. And they're meant for organizations that don't own or manage land. And these uh, labels are really misleading to consumers who can't be expected to know the difference between the various standards and could reasonably expect that if they see the SFI label on a product that it comes from an SFI certified forest. And finally, SFI is problematic because it certifies a process, not an outcome. So throughout the standard, it requires these programs to protect various ecosystem values, but it doesn't define what those programs need to entail as we saw before. So I actually did a search of the word program within the forest management standard and the word program appears 
46 times in the forest management standard, uh, which is more than the word sustainable appears. And as I mentioned before, SFI does require third party audits, uh, which in Canada are done by the Standards Council of Canada, but this doesn't assess the quality or the effect of the certification scheme. And if the standards themselves are not good enough, then the auditing process can't make up for that. So I'm going to get into a couple of examples here of some unsustainable logging that is certified by SFI. So most of you have probably heard about the logging of old growth forests in Ferry Creek, British Columbia. Ferry Creek is in South Vancouver Island and it's within a sensitive watershed and is very ecologically important. And as a result of that, there's been a lot of protests uh, about the old growth logging in this area. And it's actually one of the largest acts of civil disobedience in Canadian history with over a thousand protesters being arrested. And the area is also within the traditional territory of the Pachidat First Nation. And an elder, William Jones, is quoted saying that the area has important spiritual value to his people. And regardless of the spiritual value of this area to Indigenous peoples, and regardless of the ecological importance of these old growth forests, this logging is certified by the Sustainable Forestry Initiative. And another example, a little bit closer to home for some of us, is uh, West Fraser's proposed logging near Moon Creek. Uh, Moon Creek is in West Central Alberta near the town of Grand Cache. And AWA and other ENGOs were notified about the proposed logging in this area in July of 2021 by trappers. And uh, West Fraser was planning to clear cut 2,660 hectares of forest, which would have destroyed critical habitat for threatened caribou and Athabasca rainbow trout. And the logging in this area was ultimately paused uh, because of pressure put uh, pressure from Indigenous groups, trappers and ENGOs, um, but it should not have been up to these groups and these individuals to stop this kind of unsustainable logging that would have impacted species at risk, uh, especially within an SFI certified forest. So the certification really should um, be protecting these species at risk rather than it being up to groups and individuals to put pressure on the company to stop logging these ecologically sensitive areas. And for the next couple of slides, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what we're hoping to do about this issue. Um, so the Competition Act in Canada makes it illegal for organizations to make false or misleading claims that deceive the public about the products or services that they offer. So under the Competition Act, uh, EcoJustice is planning to submit a complaint about SFI, along with um, several other complainants who are signing onto it, which includes myself on behalf of AWA. And um, so as I mentioned, um, SFI's representations about the SFI standard being sustainable are materially false and misleading. They don't have a definition of sustainable and their objectives in the standard are often discretionary, vague and not mandatory. And this is a really big deal because SFI is the largest certification system in Canada and certifies 115 million hectares in the country. So the complainants uh, led by EcoJustice and including AWA are requesting that the Competition Bureau conduct an, an inquiry into SFI's false and misleading claims. And there are a couple goals of the complaint. Uh, the first one is to generate public and media attention around the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, unsustainable forestry and greenwashing. And there's an opportunity for this at the time of the submission of the complaint, which is planned hopefully for early next week. And as well, if and when the Competition Bureau decides to open up an inquiry. And the second goal, of course, is to stop SFI from spreading false and misleading information to Canadians and empower consumers to make educated decisions around the purchase of wood products. So the complainants are asking that if the inquiry finds that SFI has made materially false and misleading representations to the Canadian public, the SFI should be required to remove all claims of sustainable, sustainability, or the like from its public communications about the SFI standard and from the name of the program itself. 
issue a public retraction of sustainability claims and an acknowledgement that certification to the SFI standard does not certify that logging conducted under it is or will be sustainable. And finally, pay a $10 million fine credited to the Environmental Damage Fund and to be paid to a person or organization for the purposes of conservation, such as the Central West Coast Forest Society or the Indigenous Leadership Initiative for Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas. And EcoJustice has had some success with some of their previous Competition Bureau complaints. Um, so just to give you an idea, EcoJustice launched a complaint against the C Canadian Standards Association. Um, that's another forest certification system that I haven't mentioned because they don't certify forests in Alberta, um, but they do certify some old growth logging in British Columbia. And EcoJustice submitted a complaint uh, against the Canadian Standards Association in July 2021, and the Competition Bureau has launched an inquiry which is ongoing. And uh, EcoJustice also submitted a complaint about Keurig and their false claims about the recyclability of their coffee pods. Um, that was submitted in May of 2019, and an inquiry was completed in January of 2022. And ultimately, Keurig was ordered to pay a $3 million fine and update its packaging to reflect changes in recyclability of their products. Um, so we're hoping to have a similar success uh, with the SFI Competition Bureau complaint as well. And that's all that I had to talk about today. So um, I'm happy to take any questions and my email is on the slide if anyone would like to follow up with me after. Okay, thank you, uh, Devin. I'm just uh, checking the chat to see if there's any questions. Um, so Don Cassidy has written in um, the chat recently, an episode of the Fifth Estate provided evidence that greenwashing occurred in the wood pellet industry um, involving Pinnacle Core, which is a UK um, company. Um, this company claimed to use waste parts of trees to make pellets, which are then shipped to the UK. It was revealed that specific species of trees were waste and the, and the company cut down trees in forested areas to manufacture pellets. This company has two operations in Alberta as well as several in BC. How and who can a dozen citizens such as I complain about this mis misinformation and greenwashing? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I did hear about that. And uh, I think one thing that you can always do as a citizen is um, write to your Minister of Forestry, whether that's uh, in BC or in Alberta, and let them know about your concerns. Um, there is a lot of misinformation about forest management and sustainability of forest management in Alberta and in BC. Um, so it's kind of an uphill battle. Um, but another thing that you can do is when you're buying wood products, you can look for the FSC label, which is uh, the certification system that, in our opinion, has um, more stringent standards than the SFI and um, does a better job of certifying sustainability. So whenever you're buying products that are so sourced from forests, you can um, look for that label instead of the SFI label. Um, and then Susan... Uh, asked if there, she was curious if there are any lobbyists for these organizations, do, if you know of any. Um, I, I don't know, no. Yeah, I don't know either, Susan, uh, likely, but uh, I wouldn't be able to say for sure. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, there's, um, okay, so there's a, another question. So Heinz has asked, while you seem to suggest that FSC is more stringent, there's also serious criticisms of SF, FSC standards. Um, do you want to speak to that, Devin? Yeah, sure. So 
Um, definitely, we're not saying that FSC is perfect by any means, but um, from what I've seen, they do have more stringent standards than the SFI. So, it, you know, they there are still times where um, there are criticisms of FSC and they have to adapt their standards accordingly. But um, overall, if you're looking to sort of pick the best certification system that you can, I would recommend um, looking for the FSC um, label rather than F SFI. Um, but of course, um, it's it's not it's not perfect, and there are criticisms to FSC as well. Um, Vivian Ferris has her hand up. Um, Sean, maybe you can make sure that she's unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you, Vivian. Hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just, I just know, you know, a spray like sawmill, which is right close to Calgary, uh, has succeeded in, in getting FS SFI um, certification. Uh, we, you know, so many of us fought that because of their long reputation in the area for not abiding by good standards. Uh, right now, they're busy um, devastating a huge wetland area, the Aura Creek wetland in the Ghost River area. And um, I just think that, you know, here's a prime example right next to us that maybe you could think about incorporating into any challenges that go forward. Um, this This is unconscionable where they're intending to log in prime wildlife habitat in, in a really important large wetland area. Um, they've been logging in here for some time and in really unsustainable area. Um, you know, we've, we've really looked at um, the regeneration efforts that they've made all up through the ghost, like up um, west, on the Trans Alta Road and all the big clear cuts up through there that, you know, in, in periods of five to 10 years, the regeneration rates of those clear cut areas is abysmal. And um, I mean, Heinz and I um, would have been involved in escorting people out who were about to, um, to allow sustainable um, certification for this company to look at those sites and we just could not get much traction there. So here's a nice site right close to home, might further investigate and um, use it to, you know, whatever capacity in, in um, AWA's attempts with um, eco justice. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Vivian. Um, that's a really good point. There's a lot of other examples of unsustainable logging that's going on. And um, as you saw in the map of forest certification in Alberta, um, most of the companies operating um, in Alberta are SFI certified. So um, there is there are definitely a lot of examples and that's that's definitely a good one to maybe look into a little bit more. So thank you. Um, so there's another question from Liz. Uh, Devin, concerning that forestry has now been lumped in with parks in Alberta, does that mean they want to log in our parks? Do you want to address that? Yeah, sure. So yeah, that's definitely a concern that we have. So just um, in case um, anybody is not aware, um, when Danielle Smith was elected, she sort of rearranged her ministries to um, put parks in the same ministry as forestry and tourism, rather than in the Ministry of Environment and Protected Areas. Um, and this is concerning, uh, in addition to some comments that were made by Danielle Smith about how forestry is a good way to open up parks to recreation, like off-highway vehicle use. Uh, it's something that we are concerned about. Um, we had a news release um, that my colleague Ruping Lo put out um, last week. So it's something that we have our eye on for sure. We definitely don't want to see um, the government open, opening up parks for logging. And um, if they do, it's something that we'll definitely be involved in moving forward. 
Thanks, Devin. Um, so PAB 20 has asked prior and informed con consultation with Indigenous peoples. What is the track record here in Alberta? Well, of course, um, you know, overall, there's definitely a bad tra track record with prior informed consent with Indigenous peoples. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important um, in, in what I've seen from uh, certain companies, there's definitely a lot of criticism around um, how they interact with Indigenous people. So it shouldn't be just conferring with them or communicating with them. It should really be working with them and ensuring that their rights are protected and that their livelihoods are protected. Um, and they should, the forestry companies should be able to have consent from these Indigenous peoples that rely on the forest lands. Um, so I don't know if I can give a more specific answer to that question, but um, yeah, overall, the track record, of course, uh, as it is with all of Canada and North America, is very bad when it comes to um, prior and informed consent. Um, and, you know, really, we would like to see certification systems um, put a greater emphasis on that and have really good stringent indicators uh, around prior, inform prior and informed consent with Indigenous peoples. Agreed. Um, so Liz made a comment, unsustainable logging would also be that which is going on in our headwaters to the west of Calgary. Yeah, I think I believe that there's lots of examples throughout Alberta where this is the case. And Absolutely. then, and, yeah. and then Heinz made a comment, uh, transparency is a big problem with forest certifications because the auditors are not willing to share the results of their work with the public. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a big problem. Um, I did read that um, I think the FSC, the Forest Stewardship Council, does require that their auditor reports are made public. Um, I'd have to double check that, but I, I think I did read that, um, whereas the SFI does not. Um, so that's just another reason why um, why we would say that uh, you know SFI is not our top choice for sure about forest certifications. Um, it's a huge issue and people should be able to see the forest management plans and uh, and the audits and the reports that are coming out of that um, if we're to be sure that our forests are managed sustainably. So yeah, I agree with you, Heinz. That's definitely a big concern. Um, okay, Devin, I don't see any other questions. If anyone has any last questions, uh, either put your hand up or put it in the um, chat. But I'd like to thank Devin for giving this presentation. Um, she, we had her do a lunch and learn on this topic in our office. And I was so impressed by the um, information that I thought it was really um, invaluable to share with our members. So um, I really appreciate that uh, she agreed to do this presentation. Uh, we've had a couple more um, questions come in, Devin. Um, sure. Is it possible to get the federal government to legally intervene in stopping poor logging practices, considering climate change objectives of the federal government with logging, um, reducing CO2 absorption? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, so you might have seen recently uh, Nature Canada and the Natural Resources Defense Council just did a, um, an analysis and a report about the emissions from the forestry industry in Canada. Um, so using the government's own numbers, they calculated um, what the emissions are from the, uh, from the logging industry, which aren't reported the way that emissions are reported for other industries. And they found that um, emissions from the forestry sector are on par with emissions from the oil sands sector. And uh, that's a huge issue because they're not reported transparently and um, there's no plan in place to reduce those emissions. So um, is it possible to get the government, the federal government to legally intervene? Um, Nature Canada did send a letter to uh, the federal minister about that a couple uh, weeks ago that AWA signed on to. Um, so we're hoping that with this new report coming out, from Nature Canada, um, it kind of shows how unsustainable logging is with regards to carbon emissions and climate change. So um, we're hoping that uh, we can use that to get some traction and to get some government intervention, but um, we'll have to see what happens. Thank you, Devin. I've put the link to the Lost in the Woods report um, in the chat. 
And then Johnson Chan has also put a link in. I'm not sure what the link is um, for. Yeah, JC, do you want to um, put in the chat what that link is for? I know he works for ESRI, I believe. So it might be something to do with ArcGIS around forests. Um, okay, so we seem to be at the end of um, the questions. I would just uh, put a, one last request out if you are not a member of AWA, if becoming a lifetime member, it's a, my, a small charge, but having more people uh, behind us when we speak to government always helps. So please feel free to um, join, become a member of AWA. Um, so Johnson has said, this is a story map regarding BC, uh, BCTS and is bringing awareness to the snapshot of BCTS logging, uh, BC timber sales. Yeah, great. Thanks for that. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, so I'd like to conclude here, but I would like to also note that tomorrow our office is closed in recognition of Remembrance Day. And I hope everyone takes a moment tomorrow to uh, think about our serving uh, military and uh, our veterans. And I would like to conclude it there, unless you have any final comments, Devin? No, just wanna thank everybody so much for coming.